is a uh, rainy day in Sisters, Oregon. Um, we have not had this much rain in a long time. And G tells me that it is supposed to rain for the next 20 days. Oh, But, you know, what are you going to do? you got to stay in the beehive and do some quilting. So that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you a little bit different perspective with the camera. So normally I shoot this way towards my design wall. And now I'm shooting back towards the staircase that goes down to the main house. And uh, I have to say that although it is raining and gray outside, I'm very excited because it is the perfect um, so day. And when I hear that voice inside my head that starts complaining about the weather, I also hear my mom who says, What do you complain about the weather about? Nothing you can do about it. So, yep, mom was right. So today is a beehive day, and it's going to be an interesting one for those who are wanting to make a fabric postcard, because that is what I'm going to do. But first, let's do a little bit of mail. Um, I received, sorry for turning my back on you, but I received some beautiful cards. Um, they are just stunning. I mean, uh, I have a friend, Becky, in um, Mesa who um, makes her own greeting cards on top of being a quilter and a cross-stitcher, of course. You know, us, us quilters, we do ten things also. But she makes beautiful cards, and some of these are just wonderful. This is from Donna. Look at that little block. And um, Debbie... One of my Instagram and blog friends. And then I was so, so blown away when I got a call from the Stitch and Post that there was something waiting for me down at the desk. And uh, that someone had left something. And so I went down to the Stitching Post later that afternoon. And Marcy happened to be going through the area. And she dropped off two scissor fobs that are absolutely adorable. Look at those. Maybe against my black shirt here. Yeah, so I have one on this pair of scissors and one on the other. Oh, look at I have a needle that's magnetic to this. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> but aren't they gorgeous? They're black and white beads and, and then they have a little bee on the end. I absolutely love them, Marcy, and they're already way into use. So I'm going to get rid of those needles before I hurt myself. And then, oh my gosh, another um, fellow Instagrammer and Graham, who's in the UK, sent me this beautiful Manchester bee brooch. Look at that. I am going to be wearing that during my class this this summer, if not before. <laughs> Thank you, Graham, so much. This is um, this is just a treasure, and I appreciate all the love and support from everyone. The other thing that I <laughs> love about connecting to quilters and cross stitchers and stitchers of all kinds is that. We are, as a collective group, for the most part, a very sharing and supportive group. And so I happened to tell Elaine how much I loved her cross-stitch, and um, she sent me the pattern. <gasps> I'm so excited about this. Look at this. The bookshelf. It belongs in someone's library. I, am so, I have so much fun. Um, cross-stitching this. And thank you, Elaine, for adding to my pile of things that I just love and want to do. So now we're going to talk about postcards. And I'm not going to um, 
drag this video out with you watching me design and all of that. I am not a designer per se, but the way we raise money for the Arts and Sisters uh, is in various ways. And the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show supports the arts besides supporting the free quilt show and sisters, um, they support the arts and music in the schools. And so um, they ask all the teachers and people who want to, to donate fabric postcards. And all of the teachers' postcards and some of the other artists' postcards are framed. And they are framed by um, Myrna of High Desert Frameworks in Bend. And let me tell you, she is an artist in framing and has won international awards for her framing. She really, I, I, I can't tell you how beautiful it um, enhances whatever work you want to have framed. So I realized that I had to get on the stick and make my postcard because the deadline was uh, the postcards had to be there by May 1st. Holy moly, have I got to get moving. That means I have to think of something, design something, stitch it, and have it ready to go to Myrna. So she has time. She donates all her time and product to frame these postcards such a, a, a generous heart. Um, so that's what I'm doing today and I'm taking you along. Uh, <laughs> because I'm not a designer it's always a, a, a challenge for me to figure out. But just to give you an idea, anyone can send in a, post, a fabric postcard and they are sold to support the music and arts. And if you decide to do that, you uh, and there's also a Robert ha uh, Kaufman fabric challenge where they give you a few squares of uh, Kaufman fabric and you make a postcard of it and send it back to the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. But they all have to be here by May 1st, so if you're interested, get on the bandwagon with me. So for the last 12 years, they've raised more than $104,000 through auction and sale of these postcards. They jury the, the board juries the postcards and approximately 12 to 18 of them are custom framed. And then um, Myrna, the owner of High Desert Frameworks, um, brings them out there, they're set up, and there's a silent auction that goes on all week during the Quilters Affair out at the high school. If your fabric is not juried to be framed, it is still being sold at a premium price to be to raise money for the arts and music and we so appreciate that you do that. So to give you an idea, I will show you the postcards that I have bid on the auction and actually won. Just to give you an idea of the framing. So here is a postcard by Jean Wells. Now I figured, you know, I need to um, own one of her postcards. It's a, it's a requirement. It, it, hers are so indicative of nature and what's around here. So I, um, I had to get that postcard. And sometimes it's a knock down, drag out fight to get those. And then this one, <laughs> I, I bought this one for G because it was, uh, it was auctioned, uh, it was auctioning off and people were walking by and going, what is that? But I, I recognized it right away, that it was a topographical map of sisters. So I bid on this and got it. And G was out of town. He was at the Blues Festival in Portland. And I hung it on the wall to, to see if he would notice. And he walked in the house and he, he saw it and he goes, Oh, a map of sisters. I knew I bought the right postcard by Carla Alexander. So that's awesome. Then Tony Belinda Phillips, who is a local artist and teacher, she um, was teaching a postcard class. She teaches the postcard class at the Stitch and Post. And 
one year she was um, letting people like she had a drawing and you could pick a postcard of hers so I got her postcard and then I took it down and got it framed and this one hangs in our bedroom so you can tell that these tiny little they're the size of an actual postcard are um, pieces of art little pieces of art okay now here's here's where I have a I, I mea culpa mea culpa I I'm making a confession I made the first year I made a postcard um, I liked it I loved my postcard but when I saw the framing I I actually bid on my own postcard <laughs> because of Myrna's framing she just looks at the postcard and then creates the frame so here's my postcard that I, the first postcard I made. So it's out of wool and it's um, I used a musical note fabric on the back and then I did bullion stitches all the way around and it's absolutely beautiful but what sent me over the top I hope you can see this is that she actually did a cutout on the mat and the frame not to make you dizzy, the frame has musical notes all around it. Oh, well, there was no decision to be made. I had to have my own postcard back. I, I am somewhat embarrassed about that, but uh, I did it anyway. <laughs> so I, I just love how she frames. So today, I'm going to take you through my process of creating a postcard. I have to design uh, the motifs and then uh, put it together and then stitch it because I am a, a, mostly a hand stitcher. So that's what we're going to do today. So hang in there. Um, chosen my fabric I I tend to <laughs> for the last three years I've been using the same fabric because I just love the musical notes and it's kind of a tone on tone a little bit so I already have a SF uh, 101 Palon product on the back of this fabric so it's kind of stabilized for my hand stitching and then the Tim Tex is this um, kind of somewhat stiff that will be the center of the postcard and I'm basically just using this there I am using this to um, get the right size uh, background so I'm going to just cut out my um, piece of fabric I need to design my piece let's get let's get a ruler one should be always prepared, huh? But this is totally, our videos are totally casual. They're not professional. So I'm just going to, I don't have to worry about my fabric fraying and it getting too small because uh, I am, uh, I have the SF-101 on the back. That's kind of going to make it just perfect. So, there we go. I'm using my Temtex as my guideline. Someone needs a new blade. I'm just going to cut those hairs off. Okay, so now I have the base of my postcard. So now I need to make a paper uh, 
piece that's this size so I know how big to make my design. So that's the next step. I left out because my cute little notepad was the exact length of my postcard. So I'm just going to cut off one end because it's a little bit longer or wider than I need. So now I have a piece of paper to, to make my design on uh, of what I plan on uh, creating on the postcard. So stay tuned. Harry Connick Jr. came in perfect. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to do something along this line. I love the uh, bleeding heart is one of my favorite flowers. And so I like to put the little hearts in there somehow. And naturally the bee. So we'll see how it goes. So next is to um, take my scrap piece of which I have someplace here. Oh, my scrap piece of SF1, uh, not SF101, this is um, Soft Fuse, um, my favorite fusible for wool, and to start picking out some scrap wool and doing the designs and putting them on there, on my postcard. So I, I um, googled the leaves on a bleeding heart because I, when I drew it, I knew it didn't look right. <laughs> so I googled that and now I've drawn um, something more in line with what the leaves look like. And then I traced my motifs onto my um, soft fuse. And now I'm going to cut out my wool pieces. When I fuse my wool with um, soft fuse, I steam it. I don't care if it says don't use steam. I steam it from the front and the back. And I've never really had any problems. So sometimes breaking out of the mold is better. So I've got my fabric background used with a piece of um, SF 101 and I've got my motifs drawn and fused on wool with the soft fuse and now I'm going to cut them out. These fabric postcards are fun to make just in general, all the only uh, difference from sending a fabric postcard and, and a regular postcard is that you have to um, be sure to go up to the window and have it hand stamped. It won't go through the post office machinery. But I have received some beautiful fabric postcards. Um, and my friend uh, who is the light table queen at MISO, uh, on my favorite light table. She sent me several last year that were just so fun to receive. There's 
my beehive. I feel like I need to, when I'm cutting these small pieces, be sticking my tongue out on one side to balance off my hand uh, cutting these small pieces. Like, uh, uh. Making my little bleeding heart. leaves out. Well, the thing about a postcard is these are tiny motifs. Oh, that's so perfect, if I do say so myself. Okay, time to peel off the paper off the soft fuse and you have to leave you know at least a quarter inch or more on the outside edge because what you're going to do is take the Tim Tex and another piece of fabric and you're going to tightly zigzag all the way around the edge to make the postcard so you want to stay away from that edge Okay, so I've arranged my um, motifs, and now I am ready to do the permanent views. Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> I hope it's in the right spot. <laughs> The good thing is that these are not giant projects, so it's not like you can't just redo it if you had to. But given that I've got all these deadlines, I need to get this done. So now I'm going to turn it over and steam it from the back side, get that wool all in there. Okay, so it doesn't look like much because it's just the beginning, but here you go. Now I'm going to do the decorative stitching a la Sue Spargo. Um, I'm going to Spargo it. <laughs> and uh, then I'll show you um, as I do that. I didn't turn my lamp on because it's so dang bright in your eyes and uh, but it provides awesome light to my table. So I have my motifs all attached to um, the postcard and the next step for me is to just kind of whip stitch tiny tiny whip stitch around the motifs. And that is so that um, they'll stay attached there while I am uh, doing the decorative stitches. And so I'm just taking a tiny um, whip stitch just all the way around because it's not really supposed to show up too much. I think this is going to be adorable when it's done. And um, hopefully... Um, there'll be people bidding on it. When it comes to whip stitching the motifs down, you want to kind of match the thread to the um, fabric only because you don't really want it to show up. Um, you can either use a wool thread. Um, a, you don't need to uh, use a thick thread. You want a thin thread and you want it to match so you can either use a wool thread which um, my uh, friend Sandy in BC actually spun um, 
these for me uh, onto bobbins off of her because one spool of wool thread is like going to last you a lifetime. And, or you can sometimes find them uh, and buy them like this, although I have heard that these, the maker of these uh, donuts are, is not doing that anymore, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, but if I don't have a wool thread that matches, I use embroidery thread, one strand of embroidery thread. I'll even use regular sewing spool thread if it matches, and because uh, I'm just giving it a tack down so then I can go back and do the decorative stitches on it. This project needs to be done and off my list today. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I'm putting my nose to the grindstone because I have to make another auction uh, wall hanging and I, I want to be sure to be able to give that some time, and it has to be done. Um, but the deadline is a couple weeks later than this one. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I did not change uh, my top for take two. I um, actually didn't realize that even though you shut the camera off, if you left the screen open, the battery would run down. So I ran the battery down yesterday. So it's the next day, and which means that I continued to stitch because I'm on a deadline. And I am not going to actually do a tutorial on the stitches. This is just basically a tutorial on how to make a postcard. Um, it, but I will tell you what I have been doing new shirt. I did change my shirt today. It's my Havelina shirt from Tucson. So what, let me see, where's my glasses? Okay, here we are. And guess what? Even though I took another shower and changed my shirt, it is still raining outside. <laughs> but I'm really happy because the heating, diversified heating, is here to fix my heat pump, which has been broken since we got back. So, after the video camera shut down yesterday, I continued to stitch. And what I did here is for the stem, I just did a stem stitch. I did little tiny bullions around the hearts. And I am currently doing a palestrina stitch around my beehive. So, this is what's going on this morning. Also, I am using my Seuss Bargo Bible, and I know some of you um, prefer other uh, stitching Bibles, and I totally get that. It's how it works for your own particular brain, and for whatever reason, this old copy, <laughs> the original copy of Seuss Stitching, works for my brain. So, I am on page 68 of the Palestrina knot. I am like, okay, <laughs> here's the problem. And I know some of you are just like me. You don't want to. <laughs> you don't want um, to have a lot. Of <laughs> what am I trying to say? You, you don't want to thread your needle too many times, so you get this big hunk and piece of thread. But then you're sewing your scissors and your other thread to the back of your project. Really, 18 inches, I think, is the max. And I think this might be 36 inches if I do a yard. I have a yard of thread. No wonder I am sewing everything to the back of my project. <laughs> okay, listen to what I say. Don't do what I do. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Take three. <laughs> 
I think I, I think I'm having moments today. I, I, I thought I, I am not the best person to video, but I, I cannot make, uh, I cannot ask G to make his whole life revolve around our videos. So I tried to do some myself, which meant that yesterday I, uh, let the camera die, uh, the battery die, <laughs> not the camera, the, uh, the battery die on the camera, so I could not continue stitching, I mean, stitching, I could not continue videoing yesterday. Thus, you see me in a different shirt on the same video, it's because it's the next day, but I had to continue on with the project because I have deadlines, and, um, this video is about making a postcard, not about stitching. So I am not going to be demoing um, my stitches. I use this book, Sue Spargo's Bible, her first book. Everyone has uh, their favorites of stitching books, and it's how it works for your brain. And for some reason, this original book is my go-to book. And so this is what I have done. I um, put a stem stitch for the stems. I did a little bullion stitch around each heart, and I am now working on the palestrina stitch around the beehive. Now, um, that is on page 68 of this book. A future video, I'll actually uh, do a little stitch demo, but I think I have already done a palestrina stitch on a previous video, so. That's what I'm doing now. And then, <laughs> I, I have, you know, maybe one should clear the space when you're stitching. And uh, do not do what I do, uh, do what I say. <laughs> Which means, um, you should only be cutting your thread 18 inches at the most. But as you can see, this, <laughs> this one is like... Over a yard long, if I go nose to hand, uh, uh, measuring a yard. Uh, and so I keep sewing, attaching my scissors and other thread to the back of my project. But, um, you know, it's real in the beehive. <laughs> There's nothing pretty about it, or professional. So, that's, so today I'm going to finish up this um, uh, stitching on my postcard and then I'll show you how I put it together um, and it's fun it's fun to send these through the mail uh, you just have to make sure you go to the post office and have them hand stamp it yeah and so if you want to send any to me <laughs> I'll, I'll be really happy to receive them Right now it's a little noisy around here because uh, Diversified Heating is here and finally um, fixing our heat pump, which when we arrived back a couple weeks ago was broken. <laughs> so we've been um, jury rigging heat in this house. So um, that's where we're at. So stay tuned. Well, I have um, finished the stitching. as much as I want to do. And the palestrina knot just added such lovely texture to my beehive. And then I had that little charm, that bee charm that I found at the West, which is a fabulous shop in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Uh, and we did a video on that, so if you go look at that shop, this was the little bee charm that I bought there. And that is going on to my postcard. So the next step for this postcard making is to uh, make the back. So I cut it, cut a um, piece of muslin the same size as my Timtex, which is that hard, hard product that will be on the inside of the postcard that will give it um, some heft. And even though for this particular postcard you don't see the back because it gets framed, 
I am going to make the back look like a regular postcard um, to make it look, you know, how you would if you made a postcard and wanted to send it to your friend. So I use a Micron .01 pen and I'm going to make a little line And then I like to always, this is just for my own pleasure, I like to put a little square like where the stamp would go, just like a real postcard. So there's the back of my postcard. And so this would be where you would, this side you'd write the address of who you were addressing it to. And the other side is the message. Now my message is going to be covered up because this card, particular card, will be framed. But I'm going to just write on here a secret message. I know it's silly because no one's ever going to see this, but I know it'll be there in there. And it says, may your life be filled with joy. Hugs, Anna. So the next step is to iron my postcard onto the Temtex. So let's, let, <laughs> let's go do that. I have to be careful around the bee. So now my postcard, both sides are stuck to that Timtex. And the next step is to do the satin stitch around the edge. So we're going to do that next. I press both sides to the Temtex. Got a little thread here. My back side, my front side. Now I'm going to do um, a tight, like a satin or a zigzag stitch all around the edge to kind of finish it off, make it a nice finished edge. And because I can never tell um, quite how I want it, I test run my sewing machine on the zigzag and how tight I want it and how wide I want that uh, zigzag to be because it's not going to look like a zigzag stitch when I'm, when I'm done with it. I'm just going to fill the whole outside edge. Um, and the good thing about this is that I have, like, made a mistake before. Oh, my. Jeez. You know, don't tell anybody. And the thing about it is you can just go right over the top of it. If it's not tight enough or you didn't get it, you know, where it's nice, smooth, all the way around the edge, you just kind of zigzag over the top of it again. So there's no... Um, big thing about that. So I am going to start here. I changed the foot on my machine and we're going to and this takes a long time because it's such a tight little zigzag and takes quite a bit of thread. I'm sewing one-handed. I heard the thread break. <laughs> so I'm going to re-thread it. Oh, but it is 
looking nice. It is looking nice. So you can see how I'm going around the edge. I'm just going to cut the hairs off, but here I still have to go back around the um, bot oh, this side right here because it's not quite tight enough. So that's what we're doing. But I've got to re-thread my machine. I obviously was pushing it too hard. Okay, time for a break. I think I need to clean out my bobbin casing. Stay tuned. Well, it was my dirty machine. <laughs> and I spared you the video of me tearing apart my bobbin casing and cleaning all of the dust and fuzz and dirt out of there. Um, obviously, I had not done that in a long time. <laughs> and so I, I love these little, uh, you know, pipe cleaners to get down in there. And um, Quilt Works in Bend, anytime you go shopping, they give you one. And I know I could buy a ton of these at some drugstore, but I don't know, it's fun getting something free, and so I think I need to go shopping again because these really work for getting down in there and getting that dust out of there. So that was the problem. And here is the finished postcard. So I cannot wait to see how Myrna frames this. I am going to um, not buy my own card back. <laughs> I did that one year. I know I've admitted that. But, um, because her framing is just so spectacular. That's at High Desert Frameworks. And, um, but this is a lot of fun. And it's fun to send these to your friends, you know, to have spent a little time making something and then sending it along. And I love that. So, well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope that G does some great editing. You don't have to watch me, clean, you know, clean and sew for so long. But we really appreciate um, you spending this rainy day with us, and and I hope I see you around in the next video.